Nice to see you again on my channel. Let's dive into the new story and try to resolve it together in the comments below after watching this video. Get comfortable and let's begin. So, my 26-year-old wife, let's call her M, cheated on me, a 27-year-old male, with a friend of mine, 27-year-old male, let's call him J. For a bit of backstory, when we met, I was 22 at another friend's wedding. She was a good friend of the bride, and I was the groom. They sat us at the same table so we would get together. When I first saw her, I was completely taken aback by how beautiful she was. When she sat down, we began to talk and found out we had a lot of things in common. We clicked instantly, talked for a while, ate dinner, and took to the dance floor. We danced and drank through the night, and we ended up kissing in the middle of the dance floor. When we pulled away, our friends, the bride and groom, came up to us and asked what was up between us. They were really excited to play matchmaker, but we just shrugged it off and carried on with our night. We left without exchanging numbers, but about a week later, I got a text from her asking me out. The bride gave her my number, and I, of course, said yes. It turned into a relationship. The relationship was great, other than small arguments. We never really fought, and it was never anything really serious. I eventually asked her to marry me about two years into our dating, and we were married less than a year later. We were married for a little more than a year when it all came crashing down on me just before our first anniversary. There were little things that were irritating me. She became more guarded with her phone, girls' nights became more frequent, and our sex life was almost non-existent. I had brought this up on multiple occasions, but was brushed off and told that I was letting my insecurities get to me. She would continue to go on as if what I felt and tried to communicate didn't matter to her. So, I became colder and colder. I stopped giving her a goodbye kiss as I left for work, and unless it was something important, we hardly spoke. One night, while she slept, I took her phone and laptop and skimmed through her texts, emails, and messenger apps. I found nothing, and from reading the stories on here, I checked her car. I grabbed her keys and looked in her car and found a second phone. I knew in that instant what was going on, but I wanted all the evidence for when I called her out. I didn't want her to say something like it had only happened once or anything stupid like that. I looked through the phone and found only one number. I read through every message and connected the phone to my computer and printed out every message and every photo. I spent the night researching divorce lawyers. I spent hours of my day in my at-home office reading bios of lawyers and found one that I liked and emailed him. But as it was Saturday, he wasn't in the office. I then wanted to know who the guy was, so I grabbed my phone, typed the number I wanted to call, and pretended I'm Spectrum because who doesn't have Spectrum? But Jay's contact popped up. That took me a minute to put two and two together, but when I did, I blew up. I was yelling and cursing in my office, and my wife opened the door to check on me. But when I saw her, I told her to get the F out. She closed the door and went to our room. I had never cursed at my wife or raised my voice above a normal volume all of my day. I never left my office. I was just silently raging, just glaring at the wall. I called one of my friends groomed from the wedding and told him I needed to go for a drink and asked if he would come with me. He must have heard something in my voice because he asked if I was okay. I told him I wasn't and I really needed to drink. So, without a word, I took all the printouts and left to go to the bar. I arrived first, ordered four shots of Jack and a beer. I was on my last shot when my friend, whom I'll call T, arrived and asked what was going on. I told him straight out that M was cheating. He gave me sympathy and I asked if he wanted to know with whom. I told him it was Jay and he became visibly irritated. He was the one who introduced me to Jay and all he could say was I'm sorry over and over. Jay and I were never super close, we wouldn't ask one another to hang out, but if we saw each other at a get together, we were friendly. I told T not to mention this to anyone as I had just found out and I hadn't even spoken to Amber, a lawyer, yet. I asked him not to tell his wife and if she asked what was wrong with me, to say I'm having problems at work and he agreed. We drank and talked for most of the night 
Then I called an Uber and went home around 3 a.m. It was the first time I looked at my phone since I called T, and there were missed calls and a bunch of texts, all from him, asking where I was, when I'd be home, and if I was okay. I got home, and she was asleep on the couch. I just walked up to our bedroom and went to sleep. I woke up with her in the bed, so I got dressed and left the house. I went to go pick up my car and go to my office and bury myself in work for the day, and went back home around 10 p.m. To my surprise, my wife was there to greet me, and she told me she had made me dinner. She asked if I wanted her to heat it up. I told her no and went to bed. She followed soon after, asking what had been wrong with me. I told her to leave me alone and I wanted to sleep. She kept pestering me, and eventually, I snapped and yelled at her to stop. I'm trying to sleep and go away. The next morning, I received an email from the lawyer asking to meet later in the day, and I confirmed and got ready for my day. I went downstairs to leave, and M had made breakfast, asking to talk. I made a small plate and sat down. She started by saying I've been acting different and going on and on about how I've changed, and she wants to know why. I told her work has been stressful, and soon it would be all over. I finished up until I've got to go. I went to my office and counted down the minutes to go meet the lawyer. When I left, I told my assistant I'm going out to lunch with a client. My wife would call my work sometimes, and I left. The meeting with the lawyer went well, and I handed over all I had gathered on her. The lawyer had told me, well, I'm sorry for all that's going on, but I'm happy you gathered all this information. You see, we live in an at-fault state, so your wife has no claim on most of your money. I told him that I hadn't even thought about it. I was just thinking that I had to divorce her as soon as possible. He had to keep the evidence, but I told him that I prefer him to just make copies. I hadn't told my wife that I knew yet, and I didn't want to hear her excuses. He agreed and had his assistant make copies. I asked when she would be served with the papers. He told me about two weeks. I thanked him and left. I went home to confront my wife. When I arrived, she wasn't home, so I called her. There was no answer. I called again, but there was still no answer. I texted her, I don't give a f asterisk 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 if you're writing J right now. Get home. We need to talk. Lo and behold, she called me not a minute later, asking what I was talking about. All I told her was to get home now. She arrived about 15 minutes later, and I said to her, wow, look at that. 15 minutes. That's about the same distance between here and J's, isn't it? She looked at me dumbfounded. I gave her a minute to gather herself, but she was just looking at me. I said, well, nothing to say? She tried to deny and gaslight me, and I let her continue on. She worked herself up and started to insult me. I slammed my fist on the table to shut her up and pulled out the evidence. At first, I showed it to her from the side and said, look at this mountain of things I gathered on you. Then, I showed her each printout one at a time. She then told me to stop and started to cry. She tried to apologize and told me she loved me. I said, honey, what happened to that energy you had before? You were so adamant on degrading and insulting me just a minute ago. She tried to hug me and tell me how sorry she was. I put my hand out and told her, don't touch me. She said, we'll go to the bedroom and do whatever I like. I looked her deep in the eyes and told her, sweetheart, I will never touch you again. Do you want to know who else has these photos and messages? My lawyer. I'm divorcing you. Now get a bag, gather your clothes, and get out of my house. That was three days ago, and I haven't heard from her. I'm sorry about how long this is, and if there are any spelling errors. I'm curious to those that have been where I'm at, what can I expect from here? Thank you for reading. Update 1. Let me first thank all who commented or messaged me. I truly appreciate the praise and advice you all have given. I've tried to keep up with the comments, so if I didn't answer yours, I'm sorry. I hope I answer more of the common questions you all have asked in this update. 
If you haven't read the first part, go to my page, it's still there. After I posted the first part of this, you all have given me a ton of advice, so I followed most of it. This morning, I planned on doing a lot of damage control in my life, so I scheduled an appointment with my doctor to get checked for STDs, and I have that appointment in two days. Next, I started contacting all the people close to me, my father, and a few friends. They have all been really supportive, offering their advice and asking if I need help with anything. But as I got this crap on lock, I declined. I then started to contact her family. I sent a text to her mom and dad, thanking them for allowing me into their family and that I was grateful for all they had done for me, but M and I are getting divorced and that I would miss them terribly. Not really, they were very suffocating, and while they were great people, I'm happy I no longer have to deal with it. Then I told them if they had any questions, feel free to ask. I didn't hear back from them for a while, so I moved on to M's sister. This kind of hurt because her sister and I were good friends, and I knew this would mess up that friendship. I texted her, Hey, I'm sorry to have to text you this, but Emma and I are going to get divorced, and I wanted you to know. I want to thank you from day one, you accepted me as a brother. I will be around if you ever need anything from me. Around the time I sent that text, her parents responded back. I'll type up how that conversation went. Parents, we're so sorry to hear this. What happened? Why hasn't M said anything to us? OP, M has been in at least a year long affair. I suspect it started before our wedding. I'm unsure why she hasn't reached out, but I think you should call her. She left the house. I figured she would have gone to you. Parents, no, we haven't heard from her. We'll call her. Thanks for letting us know. OP, are you sure she was having an affair? Parents, I am positive. I found the texts. Parents, we're so sorry that she did that. We'll try and get in touch with her. After dealing with her family, I moved on to Jay's fiance. I can't remember if I told you all he is engaged in the first part. I know it was brought up in some of the comments. I thought this was going to be difficult, that M and J would have conspired some master plan, but either M didn't tell him I found out, or they're just idiots. I sent her a text around 2pm and asked if we could meet for a coffee or something. By 2.05, she agreed and told me to meet her at some gross hipster coffee shop across from her work at 2.30. I arrived first, ordered my horrible coffee, and waited for a few minutes. She walked in, ordered hers, and came and joined me. I told her there's no easy way to say what I'm about to tell you, so I'm just going to blurt it out. Jay has been cheating on you with my wife. It's been going on for more than a year. She was obviously shocked, so I then told her I only found out a few days ago. I know I should have told you then, but I had a divorce to get started and my own pity to deal with. She asked how I found out. I told her everything that's in the first post. I then asked if she wanted to see the evidence I gathered and pulled out a binder. She grabbed the binder and skimmed through the messages and pictures and just started to silently cry. I told her she's more than welcome to take the binder, extra copies if she wanted to confront Jay with it or use it to see if he would lie. She thanked me, stood up, took the binder, and I told her if she needs anything from me to let me know. She nodded her head and walked out, looking very defeated. I know you all had told me to just stay sober, keep a level head, and whatnot, but my world just came crashing down on my head. I'm going to take this week to sit on my back porch, drink, smoke cigars, and blur music. After this week, I'll stop feeling sorry for myself and get back to my usual schedule. On a more positive note, I already packed up most of her things, clothes, jewelry, etc. I also threw in our wedding book and every photo that has her in it in the boxes. If and when she comes back for her stuff, I don't want her here any longer than she needs to be. Also, before you ask, no, I didn't ruin her clothes. Other than a few picture frames, nothing's broken. As of right now, there's nothing else happening. I told everyone I needed to tell. My doctor's appointment is scheduled and my lawyer is hard at work to get me out of this nonsense. 90% of her things are in boxes. I really don't know what's left. If she stays out of my hair, 
This might be the smoothest divorce ever. Thank you for reading. Advice is always appreciated. I'm sorry that she has put you in this position to tell people what had happened. That's really such an unfair place to be. You shouldn't have to bear this responsibility. Op infidelity definitely doesn't just affect your relationship, but multiple mutual relationships. Update 2 Hey everyone, I'm sorry I've been am a daddy for a while and didn't respond to comments and messages, but I think I've caught up. And now for the update. Since the update, I've been enjoying my pity party, drinking, drinking, and more drinking. I say this is my first semi-sober moment since I found out about everything, and I can't really put into words how I feel. I guess numb is a more accurate word. In the last update, I told you all I notified everyone, and the only one that didn't respond was M's sister, who I was very close to. Well, that night I wrote the update, I had continued my drinking binge after I posted and passed out on the back patio with a little bottle and a few beer cans surrounding me. I woke up in the smell of breakfast being cooked. My first thought was, oh Christ, M came back and thinks the breakfast was going to make up for what she's done. I worked myself up into a rage and threw myself out of the chair, ready for a screaming match. But to my surprise, it was M's sister, call her W. I stood there for a moment, trying to calm myself back down, but when M saw I was awake, she sprinted to me and wrapped her arms around me. She didn't say anything to me, she just took my hand and led me to the table and put a plate in front of me. As I ate, she told me how sorry she was and that when her sister showed up to her house and just said that we were having problems and it would be fine in a few days. Then, she told me that when I texted her that we were divorcing, she asked M if it would be fine. Why is he divorcing you? Apparently, M just broke down and told M everything. I scoffed and said there's no way she told you everything and proceeded to tell her all that happened. W told me that M had said it was a one-time thing and that I was blowing it out of proportion. I told W that I have no intention of getting back together with M and if that is why she's here, she's wasting her time and if she's in contact with M, W needs to tell her to find a lawyer. She laughed and said she wasn't here for her sister, she was here for me. She told me that, of course, she'd be there for my sister, but that her and I are friends, and she wouldn't abandon me, especially when I didn't do anything wrong. I stood up and went to hers out of the table and just hugged her. I was so worried that all this BS that's going on would ruin her and my friendship, and hearing her say that made me feel so much better. W stayed with me for two days in the guest bedroom. She left this morning as I was preparing to leave for my cabin, which I had before the marriage, and M can't touch it. I was gathering my hunting and fishing equipment when she asked if she could join me. I told her as much as I would like that, she should probably go check in on her sister. She agreed, hugged me, and left. I'm truly grateful to W for being there for me. And before any of you say she's into me, she's not. She's also 20, and that's way too young for me. It's just a really great friendship. I almost forgot to say, I went to the doctor and got tested, and the results should be in on Monday. I've reached out to Jay's fiance a few times just to check on her. She told me she's fine, and she doesn't know what to do. I told her if she wants to meet any time next week or so, she could vent. I'm more than happy to listen. I'll be on here for a little bit, so if you have questions or advice, feel free to comment or message me. But I'll be leaving for the weekend. There's no internet out there, so I won't be around this weekend. I also want to say thank you all so much for reading, reaching out, and all the praise you've given. You all have been a light in a truly dark time in my life. To any of you who are going through this as I am, the only thing I can say is to keep your head down, focus on what you really want. If it's divorce or if you reconcile, set your goals one at a time. In my case, lawyer then doctor and notifying everyone close. Keep it off the internet. Also, set aside time to get your feelings out. Thank you again, and sorry these updates are always too long. Let's see some more community reactions. Tailbone77 says, I will say it again. 
I am so extremely effing proud of you for the way that you are handling this crap Tom and M is still delusional AF. Laughable crap with her. It would be fine in a few days, yeah, but Tuesday or Wednesday, she will know exactly how fine it will be. W is a real one and I know your friendship will endure for a very long time. Go and get some much needed RNR now and let the chips fall where they may. Fum. P.S. The longer the update, the better. It is so nice to see that W has your back, OP, true friendship. Update 3. Hello all, it's been a minute, but I thought I'd update on all the new happenings. If this is the first time you're seeing these posts, you can go to my page and see my other posts. You will definitely need context. In my last post, I told you all about W coming to my house and staying for a few days. She left when I was leaving to go hunting at my cabin. Good news, I got a buck, a nice eight pointer. I got him on my first day out there, which I am very happy about as it left me the rest of my time to go fishing. I only caught two, but they were decent size, so I made one my dinner and butchered the other. I spent the rest of my day at the cabin cleaning my deer and enjoying the views of nature. Other than a drink or two a day, I spent my trip sober, as I promised. My drinking was only for last week. Now on to the last few days. I got a call from a doctor, and I'm all clean. It's not such a shock as M, and I haven't had many passionate nights in a few months, but all the same, you can never be too sure. I reached out to Jay's fiance, but didn't hear back for some time. She eventually responded back, telling me she's staying with her family right now. She didn't really go into detail much, but her staying with her family, you can only assume as I do, that means it's not going well. At least she's with family, safe, and with all the support that she could need. I told her if there's anything I can do, all she has to do is reach out. She asked me to meet and get coffee the following day, which I, of course, agreed to. The following day, we met at the same gross hipster coffee shop and talked for about two hours. We talked about everything that happened with Ammon, and she wanted to know what steps I was taking, if I was divorcing, or if there was any chance I would reconcile. I told her after someone cheats in my book, that's it. The amount of selflessness and disrespect it takes to cheat, let alone for a year, she obviously didn't care for me. I asked her what her plan was. She told me she's confused about everything, that everything she thought was truth turned out to be lies. She wasn't sure what her next move should be, if she should move on or if she should forgive him. I told her if you could forgive someone for cheating on you for that amount of time, she's a better person than me. She told me all of her family was telling her that she should forgive him and go on to get married. I told her I was going to be blunt with her and went on to say just because it's what your family wants doesn't mean you need to follow along. Then said Jay obviously doesn't care about marriage and what it all means. He cheated on you with my wife. If that doesn't show you he's not marriage material, I told her she needed to do what she thought was right and not let anyone else make the decision that would affect her life. When I found out, all I could do was think of a way my heart could trick my brain into accepting it and forgiving her, but I just couldn't do it. I also said I only talked to one person, but I had already made my decision and no one could change my mind. I bet when you went to stay with your family, you had a pretty good idea of what you were going to do, but you let too many people in and they all gave you their own take on it. I finished by telling her all she needed to do was follow her gut. Her brain and heart will always lie to her, but if her gut feels something's off, nine times out of ten, her gut's probably right. She soon after thanked me, and we left each other and went home. The following day, I got a message from my lawyer that E.M. had successfully been served at work. I thanked him for all his work, especially in the time frame he's gotten it done. Not long after that, W. called and told me E.M. hasn't left her room all day and she's sobbing in bed. I told her she was served and is probably realizing how bad she messed up. W. asked me how the cabin was and if I got anything. I told her everything I did and how my time was there. We talked for a moment and hung up. After I prepared myself and my house for my wife's explosion, I figured if there was any time she would, it would be soon, now that she's been served. 
So now I'm walking patiently, biding my time. I have Advil on standby for what I can only assume is going to be a bad ache. I told my friend, and he agreed if M showed up, he would race over to be a witness just in case. All else fails, I'm currently writing, waiting for Hurricane M to tear through my house if or when she does. I'll send out another update. Thank you all for reading. Update 4 Hello again, everyone. I know I posted only two days ago, but some wild crap has happened, and I couldn't find the time until now to get to the comments of my last post. So, I'm sorry I haven't responded. Read through them quickly. A run through from the top of everything that's happened so far, then I'll move on to the update. For all those who are seeing my post for the first time, my wife is showing the typical signs of having an affair, so I snooped and found a second phone in her car. I immediately started looking for a lawyer, got one, and started the legal process. I confronted my wife, and after a verbal fight, she packed a bag and left. I then contacted all those who are close to us, my friends, my father, and her family. Then, I contacted her affair partner's fiancé and told her all that I knew and could prove. She was then served at work two days ago, and now you're up to date. About an hour or so after I posted last, I was waiting for EM to show up at the house and go ballistic. I had no real reason she would do anything, but given everything that's happened, I never really knew the woman. I went around to all the cameras I had up and made sure they were working properly, both the ones inside and outside. I called my friend, letting him know that M was served today, and if she shows up, he needs to get to my house as soon as he could. I'm not going to jail because of this woman. Turns out, I was right because Emma had shown up to the house, banging on the door, screaming to let her in. I immediately called my friend and W to come over because M was beating down my door. She was cursing my name and begging me to let her in, calling me every name in the book and asking how I could be so heartless. She's not wrong because the entire time she was screaming and banging on the door, all I could do was laugh. I then wondered why she didn't just walk in, she still had keys, at least to my knowledge. When my friend showed up, she was still screaming and cursing, so he started to record on his phone and stayed in his truck. But this idiot brought his wife with him, M's friend, so she got out and tried to calm her down. She walked up to M, putting her arms around her and trying to get her to talk to her. M then slapped her across the face, screaming at her to mind her own business. That made my friend, who now has a video of it, call the police. She continued to scream and curse until the police arrived. When they did, she tried so hard to play the victim. One of the two officers walked up to her and she started to cry and tell them I hit her and threw her out of the house. My friend and his wife had told the other officer that when they came to the house, she was yelling and banging on the door so they couldn't confirm that it didn't do what M said I had done. After that officer was done talking with my friend and his wife, he came to my door, and when I opened it, M said, there, that's him. He hit me. I want him arrested. She started to put me in cuffs when I told him, I can prove that she's lying to you. All I need is my phone. The officer stopped and told me to show him the view from the outside cameras. After reviewing the video, he apologized for jumping to conclusions and automatically assuming I was the one in the wrong. I told him I didn't fault him, but he then told me that they received 15 calls total from my neighbors and apparently during M's rant, she had screamed out, he hit me. See, the officers had already made their judgment. After having to deal with the police for about half an hour, M ended up being put in cuffs and charged with disturbing the peace, public intoxication, and a DUI. As the police took him to the car, W showed up and came to me, asking what had happened. I showed her the video on my phone of it all. The officer then came up to me to hand me the case number and some other paperwork. W started to ask questions about these charges, so I just went back inside. W followed soon after and sat next to me. She told me she left her house for 10 minutes to run to the store, but when she got back, M was no longer in the living room, so she thought M had gone to bed after she drank too much wine. W and I talked for a while, and she asked me if she could stay the night. 
I said she was welcome anytime. She told me that M had to spend the night in jail. I don't know why, but they could bail her out in the morning. She told me that when I went back inside, she called her parents to let them know what was happening and to see if they could bail M out because W doesn't have that kind of money. We had a beer together and soon went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, W had already left to meet with her parents. I haven't heard from M, W, or their parents, but I don't think it's a fun conversation. Well, hopefully, M was able to cool off in jail. Update 5 Hello all, it's been a little over a week since I posted, and I have some small news. If you didn't see my last update, that's because it was taken down. I don't know why, but I'll give you a rundown of all that happened. I'll try and keep it short and sweet and move on to the update. So, before my wife was served, I had told a friend it was happening and told him to be on standby just in case she came over. I wanted him there as a witness. Later in the day, my lawyer told me she was served at work and a few hours later, my wife was banging on my door. I called my friend as soon as I heard her. I also called W and told her she should come over because her sister was beating on my door. Soon after I got off the phone, my friend arrived and started recording my wife's tirade from his truck. He had brought his wife for some reason and she got out to try and calm my wife down. She ran up to her and tried to pull her away. My wife turned around and smacked her, telling her to stay out of her business. When my wife hit his wife, he stopped recording and called the police. It took about maybe 10 minutes for them to get there, and when they did, my wife flipped a switch and started saying I abused her. When I stepped outside to talk to the cops, he immediately started to put me into cuffs until I told him I have cameras that show she's lying. He stopped and allowed me to pull out my phone, and he watched the entire video showing all that she said was just one big lie. She started going off again, and the cop arrested her and had her take a breathalyzer as they took her to their car. W pulled up asking what was happening. She came and stood next to me, and when the cop brought the paperwork in to apologize to me for jumping to conclusions, I just told him I understand it's no big deal, then went inside. W stayed behind to get the full story from him, and soon after joined me. She asked to stay over because M will have to stay overnight in jail. When I woke up, W was already gone, and that pretty much sums up my last update. I haven't heard from M since that night, but my lawyer was contacted by hers, letting him know he'll be representing M. Finally, we can start this process. I also reached out to Jay's fiancé to see if she has any news on her front. We only texted back and forth, but she told me she has kicked him out of her house and had her father and brother pack up all his things and drop it off at his house. She told me her dad and brother wanted to beat him, but she asked them not to and that she just wants to put all this behind her and move on. She thanked me for checking on her and tells me her close friends are there for her when she needs them. I sent her the link to my Reddit page so she can see all the support you all give to me and to her. On Friday, the moment I got off work, I raced home and my plan was to go back to my cabin for the weekend. When I arrived, W was in my driveway. She wanted to grab her sister's things and had a list of what my wife expected. I skimmed through it and all but one thing was already in a box or sitting in my garage waiting to be picked up. I told her I'm not transporting or touching anything that's in here. I'm not going to be responsible if M wants to claim I destroyed her stuff. I told her I'd pay for a moving company to come and pack and take all her things for her because right now I'm going to my cabin and don't have the time to deal with M's crap. She said that would be great and hopes I have fun. She took a box of M's clothes and put it in her car. She then turned to me and asked if she could tag along this time. I said sure, why don't you go back home and drop off the box and pack a bag for herself. By the time I went to the store and packed up the truck, she was pulling up. I locked up my house and took off to the cabin with W. The weekend went really well. The last time I was up there, I realized what a gem this place is. It has a beautiful view and is completely secluded, so I don't have to deal with any people. It's a place you can truly breathe in and relax. On Monday, I called a moving company, and by today, Tuesday, 
three guys in a big truck pulled up and started loading. I had every box open and recorded as they closed the box and picked it up. I took pictures of all the furniture and recorded as the movers loaded it. I thanked them for tolerating me and tipped them each an extra 50 bucks. I then sent all the recordings and pictures to my lawyer and carried on with my day. The house seems empty but also clean without all her things here. When I started the process, my lawyer told me not to get rid of anything that could be considered shared, so I put most of the furniture in a storage unit. I've been sleeping in the guest room since she left, so up until I started writing this post, I've been buying all new furniture. I'll most likely be keeping the majority of it in the garage. Now that I have the space, I won't be keeping the house. Even if I went in the divorce, it holds too many now bad memories. Thanks for reading. Update 6. Hey Reddit, it's been a while since I've posted. I coach high school baseball, so between getting the divorce done, dealing with my soon-to-be ex, and coaching these kids, I don't have much free time at the moment. Quite a bit has happened, so this might be a long post, so please bear with me. Since it's been a little over a month since I posted, I'll give a small rundown of what all had happened in my last post in case you forgot. If this is the first time seeing my post or if you need to go back and reread something, it's all on my profile still. So, we left off with M being arrested after striking my friend's wife and telling the police I assaulted her. After showing them the video of all that happened, I was let go and she was taken to jail on a variety of charges. I didn't hear from M for a while until her lawyer reached out to mine, letting him know that he'd be representing M and doing the lawyer to lawyer formalities. I reached out to Jay's fiance asking what was happening and found out she had kicked him out and her brother and father took all his things to Jay's new place. I planned on going to my cabin after work but found W in my driveway waiting for me. She needed to pick up some things for her sister. After telling her I wouldn't be touching any of her things, I told her I would pay for a moving company. The following week, W asked if she could come up to my cabin with me that time, and I agreed, mostly due to everyone telling me she might be needing a break from her sister. The last time she asked me, I said no. I documented everything with the movers, making sure she couldn't claim I broke something she deems as special, and sent everything to my lawyer. That's pretty much all that had happened in the last post, and now the update. A few days after the movers took her things to M, my lawyer received some paperwork saying I damaged things and demanding I pay her $1,500 or she would be taking me to court over it. My lawyer sent her all the videos and pictures, asking exactly where the damages were that he claimed I made. He told me all this does is tell the judge we'll get how unhinged she is, and it might be a headache now, but when it's time for court, this will all be perfect evidence. I don't think her lawyer was ready for how meticulous I am and that I will photograph and document everything. When I found out about my wife's affair, I was, for some reason, pulled to this page and read all the horror stories about things these people's former spouses did to them. I absolutely refuse to be another one of those stories. I've prepared myself for almost every outcome and accusation she could make. I wouldn't put anything past her at this point. Emmy'd called me once every other day, but I never pick up. If she leaves a voicemail, I don't bother listening to it. I just send it to my lawyer. Every time I send my lawyer something, he always tells me, you're a lawyer's wet dream. You listen to everything I say, you gathered a significant amount of evidence on your own. I have yet to have a client that has done so well. I wasn't exaggerating when I said he says that every time, but it also puts a smile on my face every time. Getting that reassurance from him that I'm doing everything right just makes me feel a little bit better about this whole situation. About two, maybe three weeks ago, my lawyer told me that we have enough evidence to bury her outside of court, and if it fails, it would look good on us for trying. So we set a date a week ago to meet in a neutral lawyer's office. Before we met, he told me no matter what, don't react to anything that M might say, and that everything we do say will be recorded for a judge and we'll read it if it goes to court. We arrived in the early morning and went into the office. To my surprise, she was already there waiting with her lawyer. We walked in and the lawyers started greeting each other. M and I sat there silently waiting for what was going to happen. 
M's lawyer started by asking what we had to offer. Mine scoffed and said with the mountain of evidence of the infidelity and M's inappropriate behavior after, the only thing we'll offer her is half of the selling price of the home and half of the savings account. That's more than any judge will award you. Basically, what you came into the marriage with, you'll be leaving with. Then he looked directly at M and said, if you decide to go to court, I will put every message, making you read it all aloud. Then I will put every photo up for all in court to see, censored, but he didn't say that at the time, and make you describe in detail what you're doing in each photo. Then I'll bring up your recent charges and play the video that was taken that night. M started to tear up, looking at me, asking if there was anything she could do to make this right. I said, you've been cheating on me since before our wedding. All I can prove is a few weeks before the wedding, but I expect it was much longer. There's nothing at all you could possibly do to make me forget or forgive you for what you've done. Sign the papers. It's more than you deserve, and I want to be done with this whole sham you created. She cried obnoxiously for 15 minutes, having to excuse herself to the restroom. When she returned, she was still in tears, but signed the papers and walked out not long after. So in about a month, everything will be filed, and all I'll have left to do is sell the house. I want to thank you all for reading and all of the advice you've given. Also, shout out to her space who's currently reading this story and been bringing what's happened to everyone on YouTube. I've read through most of the comments on there, taking the advice from there as well. I don't see anything else happening, but it could be wrong, and if it does, I'll let you know. But this will probably be my last post. So again, thank you all. I hope what's happened to me has helped at least one person out there. Opie, you collected important evidence and had a great lawyer. It was wrong of your ex to disrespect you. It's good you have W for support. I hope the relationship with W can be more than platonic in the future. Best wishes, up. Thanks for watching. Drop a like and comment to push algorithms. Cheers. Guys, thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate that you have devoted your time to my work, specifically on this channel. If you subscribe to the channel, I will be happy. But if you decide to talk to me in the comments about this story, I will be even happier. Stay tuned for my next story on this channel.